Algebra 1, Concept 46. Solve quadratics using the quadratic formula. So sometimes we can't solve a quadratic using square roots or by factoring. So we've got another option. There's a formula that mathematicians discovered a long time ago <clears throat> where when you have a quadratic in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, if you pick out the a, b, and c values and arrange them in this order, you can solve it. So the solution to x's are, or they equal, the opposite of the b value, plus or minus, because remember we'll have two solutions, the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. And so when you arrange those values in that order, you will come up with the two solutions. Sometimes there's just one solution. Occasionally there's no solutions to your quadratic equation. So now let's start with our first example and let's solve x squared plus 7x minus 2. So start out by picking out your a, b, and c values. So a is 1, it's in front of x squared. b is positive 7, it's in front of x, and c equals negative 2. Make sure you take the negative sign with the number. I'm going to write the quadratic formula over here. So that is the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And now we'll plug in our values. So we'll take the opposite of 7, or negative 7, plus or minus the square root of 7 squared, minus 4 times 1 times negative 2, all divided by 2 times 1. Then we just simplify. So bring down the negative 7 and the plus or minus. Underneath the square root, let's do the math. 7 squared is 49. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 2 is positive 8. So I'll have a plus 8. All divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. I'll continue just to bring down my negative 7 plus or minus, And then I'll add what's under the square root which is 57, all divided by 2. Now we simplify. This is a word that you've heard uh, a lot the past couple weeks with our past few concepts. So to simplify, we look at the square root and say, is this a perfect square, or are there any perfect squares as factors? There are none in 57. So there's nothing that we can, um, no square root that we can take. So that means that this, believe it or not, is our two answers. So negative 7 plus the square root of 57 divided by 2, and negative 7 minus the square root of 57 divided by 2. In other problems, we may go ahead and get our calculator and estimate what this would be if we want a, a, a number answer like that. But for now, we leave it just with the square root, and this is what's called exact form because it is an exact value. We're not rounding anything. Now let's look at our next example. So we need to solve 3x squared minus 6x plus 1. So start by picking out your a, your b value. So make sure you take the negative with it. It's negative 6 and c, which is 1. I'll write the quadratic formula over here. So x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And now let's plug in our values. So x equals the negative of negative 6. So that's how you can write that. Plus or minus the square root of negative 6. Make sure you put that in a parentheses. So you remember to square that negative. Minus 4 times a, which is 3, 
times C, which is 1, all divided by 2 times A, which is 3. And now let's simplify. So the negative of negative 6 is positive 6. Negative times a negative is a positive. Plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared, which is 36, 4 times 3, which is times 1, which is 12, minus 12, all divided by 6. Then we just keep simplifying. So 36 minus 12 is 24. Now we look at our square root to see if we can simplify. So I know what you're thinking. 24 is not a perfect square, but it does have a factor. That's a perfect square. 6 and 4, but then 2 is a perfect square. So I'm going to rewrite 6 plus or minus, and now I'm going to take the square root of 4. So it comes out front. I'm going to leave that square root of 6 underneath, all divided by 6. And finally, we look at the numbers that are not in the square root to see if we can simplify. Well, we can. We can divide this 6 and this 2 and this 6 all by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1. <clears throat> 6 divided by 2, 2 is 3. And then we will write that as our final answer. So it's 3 plus or minus 1 times the square root of 6. I don't need to write the 1. All divided by 3. And remember, when we leave the square root, although simplified, this is exact form. If we wanted to estimate, we'd get on our calculator and we'd type in 3 plus the square root of 6 divided by 3 and get our first answer, and then 3 minus the square root of 6 divided by 3 and get our second answer. <clears throat> now, let's go to the applications. Sometimes you'll have a quadratic equation that is not in standard form. So the first thing you need to do is get make sure it's set equal to 0. So let's subtract the 5 over. Then let's pick out a, b, which is negative 9, and c, which is negative 5. I'm not going to write the formula this time. We'll do it from memory. So we'll take the negative or opposite of negative 9 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So we'll take negative 9 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 20, all divided by 2 times a, which is 2. Then I'll just start simplifying up top, left to right. So negative times negative 9 is just positive 9, plus or minus the square root of negative 9 squared, which is positive 81. And then I have a negative 4 times 2 times a negative 5. So that will give me 8, and 5 is 40, so that will be a positive 40, all divided by 4. I keep simplifying, so I look underneath my square root and I add those values, 121. I know what you're thinking. <clears throat> this I can simplify. So 121 is a perfect square. We can rewrite that as 9 plus or minus 11 divided by 4. Now here's kind of the fun part. We're going to actually figure out our two number answers. So our first one is going to be the added 9 plus 11 divided by 4, which is 20 fourths. Did I do that right? 9, yeah. Or 5. And then our second answer, which is 9 minus 11 divided by 4. So that's negative 2 fourths or negative 1 half. So we can really picture those if we were graphing this quadratic that it would whoop, um, cross at 5 or negative 1 half. 
Now let's try another. Notice in set two, we've got another situation where it is not in standard form. So the first thing we'll do is rearrange that. 2x squared plus 2x minus 12 equals 0. And then I will pick out a, b, and c. We will plug them into our quadratic formula. So x equals the opposite or negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's 2 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 12 all divided by 2 times a, which is 2. So I'll keep simplifying. Negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 12 is 96. And that's a negative times a negative is a positive. 96 all divided by 4. Now I just keep going. I add underneath my square root. And then I know what you're thinking. 100 is a perfect square. It's 10. So now we're using all these scales all together to solve quadratics. So we've got 2 plus or minus 10 all divided by 4. We're going to find those two solutions first by taking 2 plus 10 and dividing it by 4. <clears throat> Sorry, that's a negative 2. So that will give us 8 over 4, or 2. And then our second solution, so we'll take negative 2 minus 10 divided by 4. So that's negative 12 divided by 4, or negative 3. So those are our two solutions. Now finally, look at set 3. What happens if you get a negative number underneath the square root? Well, you may not have thought about it, but if you have negative, let's say, 16, you may think, oh, well, that's negative 4. Well, if you think about it, negative 4 times negative 4, no, nope, that does not equal negative 16. And then if we try positive 4, and we have to have the same number, that means a number multiplied by itself, that's square root. 4 times 4, nope, that's positive 16. <clears throat> so there is no real number answer. For negative roots. There are imaginary solutions, but that'll be for another class.